This rivalry began in 1906. BYU leads the 236th meeting, 35 to 28. The Cougars have won seven in a row. They are 3-0 here at Vivint Arena. BYU won last year in Provo with Nick Emery coming back and giving a spark on an emotional night. It's an, an emotional night here with the crowd 60-40 at Vivint Arena and a great energy in the building. A moment ago, Spencer with Utah State head coach Craig Smith. Coach, how much did Justin being only playing seven minutes affect what you wanted to do in the first half? Well, Justin's a really, really good player. So when you have a really good player and not play the kind of minutes you want, and he's been playing outstanding basketball, I think leads the country in double-doubles. So um, certainly that's a big loss, but that's part of it, man. That's how basketball works. And we just got to find a way to get better. They, they're a team of runs, and they put a little run together uh, down the stretch where we didn't score last eight possessions. You were really excited about the defensive efficiency of your team when BYU got up and was making some shots. What did you do to change things to help the Aggies climb back in? Well, they're so good in transition. Obviously, they're a great three-point shooting team. They made them run in the middle of the half. They're getting loose in transition, and we started sending three back, and then we made them more of a half-court team. So it's a game of runs, and hopefully we can come out early and make a run on ourselves. Coach, thanks so much. All right, thank you, guys. Spencer, thank you. Second half underway. Sam Merrill just one for six shooting in the first half. That number will have to improve for the Aggies if they are to win tonight. In the corner for three, and Porter sets the tone and drops it in. Uh, Abel Porter had a, an open three that he made in the first half assist from Sam Merrill. If you leave him open, he can knock those down consistently. He's got eight points. Trevin Dorius, the seven-footer, getting the start here in the second half. Hawes misses on his first three on the break, after the break, and Porter on the rebound. When Hawes really feeling it in that first half, comes out here watching him in warm-ups, knocking down shots in warm-ups. That was a deep three to start with, a little bit of a heat check. Merrill had the pass deflected, and then Anderson had it stolen away. Mark Pope says, let's go, let's go, as he stands in front of us. This BYU offense flourishes when they're in transition and on the run. Here's Yoli, spins to the right. Beautiful shot off the glass. Well, and he, and he was waiting for the double team to come. It didn't come, didn't come. And then he puts the ball on the floor, and the double team just kind of a half double fear from Dorius coming over. Too much room for Yoli Childs on that baseline. Childs was six. He took over in the second half Tuesday night against Nevada after a scoreless first half. Porter. Banged initially and then hit the second time, and the second time got the whistle and the foul on Toulson. That's his second. So a, a skip pass, actually a double skip pass, cross court to a wide open Abel Porter. Here's Yoli. You see Dorius coming. He came late. He waited till Yoli Chas put the ball on the floor, and then he only came halfway. Merrill draws contact on a physical drive to the basket. Fouls on BYU. It'll be Barcelo. And that'll send Sam to the free throw line. Maybe Sam can get his offense going with a couple of free throws. Well, and this is a Utah State team that, that thrives on getting to the free throw line. They, you, you, you look back over last season and through the beginning of this season, they get to the free throw line way more than their opponents on average, and that's part of their game. They need to do that. They weren't aggressive enough at attacking the basket in the first half. In his uh, three previous games against BYU, Merrill's averaged at 11.6 points a game. He has not shot the ball well in this in-state battle. He's got seven points so far tonight. Most of that from the free throw line. Haas on the drive, gets around Dorius. Yoli for three. Childs buries it right over Anderson. Now Yoli with nine. Shooting the three on the season. Yoli's now five of eight. Five of eight for your 618. Yeah, and that's a problem when you're trying to figure out how to defend him. You can't any longer say, well, just play off of him. Don't let him take you to the rim because he'll shoot the three right over you. Anderson, a strong finish with the left hand. He's got nine. Anderson read the defense well there, and it was a small coming over to help. So Alex Barcella come over just a little bit too late. If your guard's going to help, he's got to be there to take a charge, not to try to block the shot. Colby Lee hands it over to Barcelo. And Barcelo hits his first shot of the night. 
Transferred from Arizona, as mentioned, a junior out of Chandler, averaging just under 11 on the season. He had 13 Tuesday against Nevada. Miller off the glass. Now we're starting to see some firepower. Miller's got five. Pause, back to Yali off the glass. That started to develop at the top of the key, and BYU calls a quick timeout as the Cougars maintain that lead they had at the break. Seven points. 11 now for Yoli. He's gotten into this rhythm quiet first half the last couple of games. Very loud second. Back up more in a moment. Our Sports History Showcase is brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Last year at the Beehive Classic, BYU blew out Utah 74-59. Big game from T.J. Haas. But the play everyone's still talking about was Yoli Child, 31 points. And here comes the big one. Yeah, great, great assist by Haas. But, man, if you're going to come over, you better come over <laughs> and, and mean it because Yoli's going to throw it on your head. That was one of the nastiest dunks we saw all season long in college basketball, right over the top of two guys. BYU, the win tonight, will sweep the Beehive Classic. Utah beat Weber State by 11 earlier today. They're 2 and 1. Weber State will play in Provo next Saturday night, right here on BYU TV. Earlier today, the BYU women on BYU TV defeated Utah Valley 71 to 57. 16 34 to go here in this one. BYU by seven. The Cougars have done a good job on Merrill. Here's Kata working Lee, loses the ball. Haas comes out with it. It's three on one. TJ to Barcelo. Tipped up and in by Yoli. Oh, Yoli with a quiet first half, and now he's six of eight in the game. Just like that, one for one from three and 13 points. And a good defensive effort that time on the help on Kata. Anderson answers right over Yoli. Well, and a and Anderson now with 11 points. He's five of nine from the field, and he has led, led these Aggies in scoring from the get-go. Anderson had 24 in that come-from-behind win over LSU earlier in the season. It's Yoli again. Cleans up his own mess. I'll tell you that great body control by Yoli because Abel Porter came over to help and put himself in a really good position to take a charge. And Childs felt the guard there and then just moved to the side and floated it up there, got his own offensive rebound and tapped it in. Anderson to answer back, and he does. It's the Anderson Childs show. 14 now for Anderson. Six of ten, 60 percent from the field for Anderson, who's answering. He's keeping Utah State in the game. Well, and the Aggies come back, and for the first time, we see a zone defense against the Cougars now. BYU's been pretty good at busting zones. Toulson passes on the three, kicks it. Haas won't pass on this three. Offensive rebound, Toulson. Offensive rebound, Lee. And one of the top rebounding teams in the country is getting pushed around on the boards to start the second half. Well, and one of the problems when you don't play a lot of zone is rebounding on the defensive end out of your zone because you don't have a guy that you're assigned to put a body on. Well, a good, good follow by Kane. That The first shot by Miller was on the bottom of the rim and came off so hard that Yoli Childs couldn't handle it. Timeout on the floor. BYU up 50-44 here in the Beehive Classic. BYU Basketball on BYU TV is brought to you by Deseret First Credit Union. You know why, we show how. Brady Industries, honestly better. And by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to Salt Lake City, 14.34 to go here tonight. BYU hanging on to a 50-44 to 44 lead. Spencer Linton, what do you have? Well, you guys talked about it. First shot out of the gate for Utah State was a wide-open Abel Porter three-pointer, and the BYU coaching staff was really fired up because BYU had done such a nice job defending the baseline early in the first half 
they very, very wanted to quickly squelch anything that Utah State wants to do, specifically with Porter. So watch for BYU to be very conscientious of the three-point shooters from the Aggies coming out of this timeout. Dave? Thank you, Spencer. The last time Utah State was out-rebounded, the one and only time this year was in the loss at St. Mary's, and they're getting out-rebounded 18-16 to 16 so far tonight. Uh, and for the Aggies, they're shooting it well, and, and Mark Pope wanted to talk to these guys about putting them up a little better resistance defensively as we see the Aggies for the first time with a little bit of a trap, and it results in a turnover. And now and a, a collision, foul. and Yoli bounces into Merrill, and they assess him with a foul. Merrill was stumbling into Yoli, but there was contact, and the official kind of blew his whistle, shook his head, and said, I got to call something. Yeah, and, and, and a loose ball. No, that's a, clearly a foul on, on Yoli Chout. Sam Merrill doing a good job of anticipating. And BYU wasn't prepared that time for that three-quarter court trap. Second foul on Childs. Kata back into the game for the Aggies. Stolen away. Harding slams into our table. Can't save it. Tremendous effort for the sophomore out of Pocatello. And the Aggies will keep possession with 16 seconds on the shot clock. Well, and fortunately, the front side of this... Uh, this table that we're at is padded because he hit that hard. He moved everything on our table going after that one. Colby Lee trying to get in Merrill's way. Now it's Harding. And BYU doing a really good job. When Merrill's coming off those ball screens, Colby Lee's showing really aggressively. Porter beats the shot clock and buries the three. What a bucket. It brings the arena to life. 11 for Abel Porter. And how about three out of four from that three-point line for Abel Porter in this ball game. That was a bomb. Just what the Aggies needed to fire things up. Yoli and Kata pass out to Wilson. Pause. Here's Lee, blocked by Kata. Here comes Porter. And on that one, it was like Colby Lee double-dog dared Kata to come block it. He telegraphed what he was going to do, and Kata was able to gather himself and just... Porter throws baseline, got away of the travel. He lays it in. He's got 13, and the lead has been cut to one. Boy, and the last two times down the floor, the Abel Porter show from deep, and then a crafty move on the baseline. And Aggies are in this half-court zone. They're extending, and they're playing a, a one... 2-2. Two, two. Here's Harding driving baseline. Up top, Toulson for three. In and out. Merrill's got it for the Aggies, and they can retake the lead. Kata, baseline, and the foul. Oh, it climbs out. He'll go to the line to shoot two as Colby Lee picks up his second. Let's go back and watch Abel Porter. Shot clock winding down. Porter's going to just have to take it up from deep, and it's right over the top of Yoli Childs and knocks down the three. One second left on the shot clock when it left Abel Porter's hand. Kate is a good free throw shooter, largely in part because the only thing he's been able to do while he's rehabbing his knee is shoot free but throws. It's, and it's been good because he's, it's a part of his game that he needs to work on, and he's been really good in his brief moments back. Kata, as we mentioned, played just 10 minutes in, in, in the last game, his first appearance back. He played 10 minutes in the first half in this one. Aggies battle back from nine down. And we are tied at 50. This zone defense, a 1-3-1, actually. And in a 1-3-1, if you can get it out of the trap, there are open threes from the angle. Harding misfires. And the rebound for Merrill. Merrill gets it back. Three-point shot, in and out. Had a good look. Back of the iron, pop back out. Well, the Aggies doing a good job of getting back because Mark Pope wanting his team to push the ball in transition and not allow the Aggies to set this defense. Toulson, nowhere to go. Yoli for three. Got another one. And BYU's back in the lead. Yoli with 18. When he's hitting from out there, Kate has got to come out to deal with him, and now all of a sudden the glass is open. Well, when you're facing a 1-3-1 zone, if you move the basketball, 
you're going to have open threes. Kata spins, has to regroup. In the corner, Porter. Whistle and a foul, no basket. Offensive foul, Utah State. And it's on Abel Porter. It takes us to a timeout. 11.15 to go. Cougars by three here on BYU TV. BYU basketball on BYU TV is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Mountain America Visa credit cards featuring triple rewards and by Les Olson Company, your office technology partner. 53-50 BYU with 11.15 to go here in the second half. The Aggies shot 40% in the first half. Blaine, they're shooting 80% here in the second half. Yeah, 8 of 10 from the field. They're moving the ball better. They're making their reads at what BYU's doing defensively better. You see Miller passing on the ball screen and going left. Abel Porter with a ball rotation to Anderson. That ball had gone inside to Sam Merrill, then back outside. Miller using Kata and then missing a shot. The ball came off so hard that Kata just kind of had a gip and goes in and finishes. But 8 of 10 in the second half. Three of four from three. Their three looks have been open looks with the exception of that one as the time ticked down on the shot clock. And they're three of four from the line. And, and right now, the Aggies are eight of 10 from the free throw line. BYU just one of one, only one free throw attempt in this game. And that's the Aggies game. And they're number three in the country in free throw attempts per game. And they're number two in free throws. made. They've made 200 free throws this season. And they're playing on attack here in the second half. Haas beats the full court pressure. Harding drives baseline, leaves it for Yoli. Loses it going up. Aggies bring it out. Anderson. Bean. Anderson open for three over Yoli. This one's too strong. Offensive rebound, Brite. And he's fouled. He'll go to the line. And he will shoot two. T.J. Haas picks up his second. And this is a good effort by Brito going in and going after it. And then Toulson getting him on the arm on the way up. This is an Aggie team that is a really, really solid offensive rebounding basketball team, especially when Bean's on the floor. Remember, he only played seven minutes in that first half. First point of the night for Diogo Brito. That's just the fourth offensive board for the Aggies in the game. BYU has five matching the Aggies with offensive rebounds. 88% on the season from the free throw line. He's perfect on that trip, and it's a one-point game. And a reach and foul on Brito. That's his second. BYU's also a good free throw shooting team. Excellent free throw. They just haven't... BYU has been settling for threes, which is what they do. This is a shooting team, a finesse team, I guess you could call them. So not going to draw as many fouls and get to the free throw line. Not attacking the rim and doing that right now. BYU already with impressive wins over Houston, UCLA, Virginia Tech, UNLV, and Nevada. Trying to take down Utah State. Yoli passes out of the double team. Harding back to Hawes. TJ steps in, steps out. Now it's Toulson. Shot clocks at seven. What a pass. And the finish by Nixon with a second left on the shot clock. A chance at a three-point play for the former Orem Tiger. How about Jake Toulson not getting in a panic when that shot clock was coming down? He knew what he had left, and he knew that he had a wide open cutter in Dalton Nixon. With two seconds left on the shot clock, he gave that up for an easy bucket. First and, foul on Anderson. And Craig Smith just, just covered his eyes because you play a full shot clock of defense only to give up a layup with one second left. Merrill nearly throws it away. Nice save by Brito. Porter into the lane. And Childs fighting Bean for it. Rips it away. And here come the Cougars. Six rebounds for Yoli Childs. Boy, excellent job of getting back. Toulson a bomb. And Anderson on the rebound. Our yeah. score box is presented by Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. Here's Brito for three. And Harding on the rebound. Boy, everyone's gunning yeah, here in the second not, half. Not a lot of fast break points, just three fast break points 
for each team in this ball game. And, and BYU wants to get out and transition and make some buckets, and so do the Aggies, but these defenses have been getting back. Chives with a short miss. And now Abel Porter will slow things down. Utah State 10 and 1, BYU 8 and 4. Merrill step back two. Still can't get it to go. Just one field goal denied for Sam Merrill, one of the greatest scorers in school history. Haas top 15 in scoring at BYU. Yoli top 14. Toulson lobs it for Harding, gets it back, shot clocks at seven. Into Yo, corner, Nixon up for three. Fight for the rebound, and Merrill's got it. Boy, Brito did a nice job because Yoli Childs was going to secure that rebound. Brito couldn't get it, but he tipped it away. That was smart, tipped it to his teammate. Seven rebounds for Sam Merrill. Here's Bean working Nixon around him, right hand. He can't get it to go. Boy, Nixon does the same thing on the other end. He, he couldn't secure the rebound, so he tapped it to a teammate. Pause. Now it's Toulson. Under eight minutes to play here in Salt Lake. Jake into the lane, gets it to Yoli. Right hand, good! Yoli with 20. A good ball movement that time for BYU to get Yoli the ball on that short corner left. 35 games of 20 or more points in the great career of Yoli Childs. Oh! Couple of looks close for the Aggies. Bean puts it up. He can't get it to go. So an offensive board for Bean, but he doesn't get that second chance point. Got to finish those. And, and the Aggies stay in this half-court zone. BYU by five. Three-point ball will be a dagger. Haas took a step. A turnover, just what the Aggies were looking for. Timeout, 7.03 to go. BYU by five. Blocked by Toulson. Don't go anywhere. Great finish ahead. Classic on BYU TV is brought to you by Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. Larry H. Miller Dealerships, driven by you. And by Ford. Learn more at buyfordnow.com. 7.03 to go, 57-52 BYU in the lead. Tonight's upcoming schedules is brought to you by Larry H. Miller Dealerships. Driven by you. BYU will host the 45th meeting with Weber State next Saturday night. We talked to Randy Ray this afternoon, classy head coach of the Wildcats. He'll have his guys ready, 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain on BYU TV. Oral Roberts in Provo December 28th on BYU TV. And for Utah State, they're going to play South Florida in Houston on Wednesday. Then they get a good test playing next Saturday. They'll play Florida on a neutral floor in Sunrise, Florida. Well, and his team's, you know, Kata out there now, but the, the more he has a chance to play with this group, the better this Aggie basketball team's going to be as this season progresses. BYU, credit BYU, they have played really good defense in the last several minutes. Dalton Nixon hit with a foul, pushing into Kata. That's number two on Nixon. Spencer. Dave, Mark Pope was really upset with BYU's inability to move the ball quickly against that Utah State zone defense. We'll see if the Aggies and Craig Smith come out still in that zone as a lob to Kata goes in. But BYU really is looking to move the ball quickly if Utah State stays in that zone, Dave. Thank you, Spencer. The timing just not there well, for and they, and they do stay in the zone. But you, I'll tell you what, Mark Pope keeps asking the team to push it, and they've got to continue to do that in transition after they rebound the ball. But these Aggies have been getting five back every time. Their transition D has been outstanding. Toulson off on the three. Kata the rebound. A lot of standing around on that. Trip down the floor. At some point, Merrill's going to hit a three. He's 0 for 5. Miller back to Kata. 
Big fella, Short, gets his own rebound. Yeah, he knew that was Short when it came out of his hand and he tracked it. Three ball is off by Brito. Salius on the board for the Cougars. Now with Kata down there, Cougars unlikely to challenge at the rim. Barsetto will challenge for three. And Kata brings it down. Eight rebounds for Kata. Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year, Freshman of the Year. Said no to the NBA, went to the camp, saw he had some things to work on. But then he injured his knee playing overseas in the summer. And that's changed things for him. Just now, he's played more minutes tonight than he's played since uh, the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and, and Keita, he played with it with the uh, U-20 Euro, uh, our Portugal's team in the Euro Championships. Um, and uh, scored 14.3 points a game. He shot 67% from the field, 11 rebounds. It was like really rolling and then had that injury, so. He's dealt with the injury. Yoli Child dealt with a nine-game suspension. Good to see them both back on the floor. Merrill falling away, beats the shot clock. Well, and pulls the Aggies within three. And I'll tell you, Sam Merrill has not had very many open looks. B BYU has designed a defense to make sure that they don't leave and help off of Sam Merrill, so he always has somebody right there with him. His second field goal of the game. Salius for three. Got it. Zach Salius from the corner. One bountiful high school grad on one end, another bountiful brave on the other, making back-to-back -back buckets. Five minutes to go for each three-pointer BYU makes this season. Mountain America Credit Union donate 50 bucks to the American Red Cross. And, and, and right after that play, there was a, there was a, a quick whistle for an injury, a little rolled ankle, and Abel Porter reinserted in the game. Under five to go. Aggies are one for 13. In their last 13 shots. And that one was Merrill a moment ago. Shot clock's at 10. Porter down to Kata. Working on Colby Lee. Right hand. Beautiful shot. Boy, and, and I don't know what else you can do because Colby Lee stood up to the contact. And then Kata just shot a bit of a fadeaway. That's a beautiful shot. That's hard to stop. Nine points for Kata. Toulson left open for three. He's now missed two in a row. Lee on the rebound. Hawes for three. And a rebound to Bean and the Aggies. Bean now with nine boards. Two well, you, wide open looks. Yeah, you don't get more open opportunities than that, especially Hawes, the second one, coming from inside out with his feet square. Here's Merrill driving into the contact. And he's fouled by his former teammate, Zach Selyus. That'll be the first on Selyus as Yoli Childs checks back in with 4.02 to play. Harding is back in as well for BYU. And uh, Selyus nursing that right leg a little bit. Boy, Sam Merrill like, grabbed that right thigh after the contact there. May have gotten a knee into the thigh and trying to keep that loose. Now Merrill at the line where he's most comfortable. Five of six tonight. 90% from the free throw line last season was Sam Merrill. He's got 10 points, so he's managed to get into double figures at the line with just two field goals. And the Aggies, after the make, they continue to go with this 2-2-1 trap. Under four minutes to go. It's a two-point game. And then they drop into their half-court zone. BYU's been in a lot of close games. We'll see if that works to their advantage. Yoli took a step and turns it over at the travel. That takes us to a timeout. 3.43 to go at Vivin Arena. 60-58 to 58 here on BYU TV. The only child's turned it over a moment ago, but he's had a big second half, and he's one of the reasons BYU has the lead. Yeah, he, he really came out and carried them offensively through the first part of the second half. Just came back off the bench after a little bit of a rest. But 20 points now for Yoli Child, seven rebounds and 26 minutes of play. They need him to finish strong. 
here down the stretch if they're going to have a chance to hold on to this lead. The Aggies, th this defense the Aggies have run has really made BYU offensively not as as, as good of a flow as they had in that first half against the man-to-man. -man. And BYU all season long hasn't seen somebody play a 1-3-1 one, one zone or a zone defense for an entire half. And Mark Pope used the word sticky, meaning the ball just stays in one guy's hands too long. They gotta know where they're going with the ball before they catch it and get it out and make that defense move, and then there'll be some seams. They try to feed Kata. It's knocked out of bounds. Hey, a shout out to Weber State. Beat Montana last night to advance to the FCS semifinals for the first time ever. We congratulate Jay Hill. Outstanding. And he's the dad of BYU TV's Ashton That's Hill. That's right. Congratulations to the Wildcats. 19 seconds on the shot clock. Merrill challenging Yoli. Passes up top to Porter. Porter picked up by Hawes. 10 on the shot clock. Picks up his dribble, needs some help. Miller over Barcelo. Yoli brings down the board. And that's what you call a box out right there. He, Yoli Child's in great inside position on Kata. Yoli passes on the three into Nixon, gets it back. Now to TJ. Three minutes to go. Barcelo back to Haas, open for three. Got it! And, and the difference that time, Dave, was Barcelo actually attacked into the center of the defense, forcing that defense to collapse a little bit. And that's what gave Hawes the open look. Kata inside, beautiful pass to Justin Bean. Bean with six. It's a three-point Cougar lead, 2.35 to go. Back in that zone. BYU lives by the three, dies by the three. Barcelo misses on the three, Bean with the rebound. And he got wide open look. They're getting that on the angles, getting it open when they're moving the ball back and forth, but but not capitalizing. Bean from Kata. Beautiful great, pass. Great pass by Kata. Eight points for Bean. It's a one-point game. Barcelo to Yoli. TJ back to Barcelo. And the transfer from Arizona. And that's a huge shot. He's I, got four. I like that mentality where he's like, you know what? I missed a three. Let me move in a couple of feet and go as far as the defense will give, and I'll take a two here. 145 to go. The lob for Kata. Nixon read it. A foul on Nixon will send Kata to the line, and he'll shoot two, but Dalton was not going to give up a lob dunk. Here's a look. So, and keep in mind that Yoli Childs had rotated off to help. And so Nixon was the help defense coming from the backside. I, hey, I like the effort. Just going up, clearly a foul, but but now you're going to put Kate on the free throw line and make him earn it from there. Aggies are 13 of 15 from the line. BYU is one of two. We talked about Utah State is as good as anybody and getting to the free throw line and keeping the other team from the free throw line, and that is held true tonight. 10 points for Kata. He's got 11. It's back to a one-point game. What a night in the finale of the Beehive Classic. And we have a classic. 130 to play. And the interesting thing is, is in the second half, Utah State basically is... Childs is blocked. Utah State's dared BYU to do what they do well. Shoot open threes, and BYU hasn't been able to make them. Timeout, Aggies, 1.15 to go. <laughs> BYU started their winning streak back in 2013. Speaking of close games, and let's flash back. Marvin Jean gonna pull the Aggies within two, and then they'd hit free throws to tie. And here come the final seconds. Lane, you and I were on the call here. Matt Carlino going to put up the shot. Where's Craig Cusick? He's right there. He beats the buzzer. And the Cougars beat the Aggies. Where's Craig Cusick tonight? Well, he's right here. He's like three, He has like three places down from us right now. Cusick is in the house watching the game. That and, started uh, a streak of seven consecutive victories in this rivalry for BYU. And Craig Smith said, you know, we want this to be a rivalry. But we've got to do our part, and doing their part is to win some games. That's right. 
So 115 to play. The Aggies have the ball. BYU has a 65-64 lead. Cougars have won 14 straight in this arena. The last time they were defeated here, back in 2007, against ninth-ranked Michigan State. Utah State won here last year. They beat Weber State in the Beehive Classic, 76-67. But they've not beat BYU here. They are 0-3. Well, the last couple times down the floor, the formula for the Aggies has been to, to come off hard off of, that, off of that ball screen and then tack the interior of BYU's defense. We saw the lob attempt, Takeda. We've seen Bean as they dished to Takeda, and he, the help came over to help on Kata. He got it off to Bean. So they've been going to the interior and then either finishing at the rim or getting a free throw. And I think that that's a good formula here. And then if you're going to take an outside shot, certainly make it be an inside-out type. Don't just keep it on the perimeter and shoot it out there. Take it to the inside, force BYU to defend, and then if you can find somebody on the perimeter open, you go there. But the inside's been good to the Aggies the last two times down the floor. Justin Bean's going to throw it in. Crowd rises to its feet. Next year, this series will go back to Logan. They run a little weave to start. Here's Kata trying to get it to Merrill. Gets it to him. One minute to play. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Into Bean. Blocked by Nixon. Followed by Kata. Kept alive. And Tulson brings it out. Well, and Nixon was the help defender. Came off Kata. That's why he got the offensive board. But it could not finish. Now the Cougars take a timeout with 47.9 to play. So watch, Nixon's got to come over and help so he can't block Kate out. And then Kata goes in and gets the board, mm. but can't finish. It was a golden opportunity for the Aggies, and Kata can't make that point-blank shot. And Nixon, the way he's battling, tipped the ball on the way up, kept the ball alive, came up with the rebound. Nixon just wouldn't quit that time down the floor for the Cougars. You can see why Craig Smith calls him BYU's version of his Justin Bean. Yeah, that's absolutely. They're very similar in the way they play full motor all game long every game. Aggie football team plays Kent next Friday in the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. 5.30 Mountain Time on ESPN2. Those teams meeting for the first time since 1974. BYU will meet Hawaii in the Hawaii Bowl Christmas Eve. Countdown to kickoff will start at 7 Eastern, 5 Mountain here on BYU TV. It's Hawaii's 15th game of the season. It's like they're in the NFL over there in the islands. And BYU and Utah State will meet in football general conference weekend Friday, October 2nd at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. What an exciting time of year. So for BYU, 24 seconds left on the shot clock, 40, almost 48 left in the game. So you take your time or you just get right you, after? You take the first really good shot. You run your stuff and you take the first good shot you have. You don't, there's no reason to run the shot clock all the way to the end and take a shot. If you get a good shot in the course of your offense, you take it now. And, and for BYU, when we saw them get the best look is when Barcelo attacked the scene, they moved the ball, he attacked the seam to the middle of the floor. The defense collapsed and he kicked it out to Haas for a wide open three looking down the barrel. BYU is 6 of 12 shooting threes in the first half. They are 4 of 15 yeah, and that's, shooting threes that's what I'm saying, in the this, second. This zone defense that Utah State has played, this 1-3-1 for a good portion of the second half, basically dares BYU to shoot angle threes, which traditionally this season they've been really good at, and they've not been able to make those open threes. Barcelo. 40 seconds to play. They look into Yoli, get back to TJ. Back to Barcelo, shot clock's at 10. Barcelo to Nixon, gets it back. From the corner for three, good! All right, well run play. Check it to two, now the officials are gonna stop. Timeout Mark Pope with 25.2 seconds. It's a two, not a three. It gives BYU a three point lead with 25.2 seconds to go. Well, Let's take another look. You know what? We were looking at that Abel Porter one earlier. And now and, they're going to look at it. And, and there, very close. There, there was some confusion in the first half. They were looking at a play to see. And remember, there's two three-point lines out there. And one of them is the NBA three-point line. This is what the officials are looking at right here. Barcelo is over the line here, but he steps back. Does he step back enough? I'm not sure. It, 
Randy McCall, Eric Curry, and Rick Randall are looking it over, and they're going to look again. Blaine, what do you think from the angle? Well, it, what's hard to tell is, is the is the white line, is the college three-point line, the black line is the NBA three-point line, and so it's not is his foot on the black line. Is 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 there a good enough picture? If his toes on the black line, he's behind the white line. It's a three. His toe behind the white line, and now it is a four-point BYU lead. Alex Barcelo has struggled to hit his shot all night long, and he hits well, and the biggest one of the night. And a well-run play out of the timeout. So, so BYU, they got Barcelo to attack the middle. He kicked it to, to Dalton Nixon, and then Yoli Child set a really solid screen for Alex Barcelo after he gave up the ball. Ran off the screen, wide open shot in the corner, and knocks down the three. That was a design play, out of the timeout, run to perfection. Spencer. And to add to the conversation you guys are having right now, Mark Pope pleaded with his guys in that last timeout to be patient, to not feel under duress if the shot clock is winding down. And the Cougars, with that confidence, with that calm, with the coaching, Alex Marcello able to knock that shot down in the corner. That was a Mark Pope special drawn up, guys. Lane, thank you, Spencer. It makes you wonder how all those close games, win or lose for BYU, has prepared them for moments like this. They've been, they've been in some battles against some really good teams, and this Utah State team is no exception. Now, for Utah State, you don't have to have a three here right now. You got enough time. If you can get a shot and you go attack right now, you take the first good shot that you can get here. Here's Abel Porter. Gets it to Merrill. Merrill's the money man for the Aggies. He's taken a lot of time. Falling away over Harding. Can't get it to go. The Cougars on the rebound. And a reach-in foul on Utah State. Jake Toulson has been a beast on the boards on a night when he's typically the guy dropping the threes. And a second foul on Brock Miller as we take another look. Well, and, and on the replay, now they're ready to throw it in, so let's get back to live action. Anderson checks in. Kata comes out. Barcelo. And, and all kinds of now with, on, on a whistle, you're gonna have all kinds of offense defensive substitutions. You want Barcelo, who's a ball handler in the game now, so he comes in. Yoli Childs comes out. Shot clock is off. 11.9 to go. And you want your best free throw shooters on the floor. Toulson into Barcelo. Out ahead of everybody. You gotta catch him to foul him, and they finally catch him. Well, that took a lot of time for 8. the foul. 8.5 seconds to go. And now the BYU faithful. They've been drowned out quite a bit tonight by the Aggie turnout in the arena. But it is the Cougar fans that are making the noise now. And, and then Yoli Childs is going to check in now um, in the half-court offense. They had their ball handlers in to get the ball inbounds and get it up the floor. Now they'll bring Yoli Childs in in the half court. BYU has just attempted two free throws in this game tonight. Toulson into the back court to Harding. Harding's fouled by Bean. That's number four on Bean. He's played the whole second half battling, and that's the first foul he's picked up in the second half. Barcelo's going to come back in. BYU is going to have the ball out of bounds. Problem with a clean game is yeah, you can't you, get to the free throw when, line. When you have no, like, this is when it actually hurts you to not have fouls because every time BYU inbounds the ball, seconds, precious seconds, tick off the clock for the Aggies. They wish they were in the bonus right now. Into Yoli, over to Toulson. And now a reach by Merrill with 5.2. And now Toulson's going to head down to the free throw line for just the third free throw tonight for the Cougars. I wonder, I wonder how many games BYU's won when they've shot four free throws or less. Yeah, it's, well, and you got to hand it to the Aggies. The, their transition defense has been outstanding tonight. They've been back, cutting off things, not allowing BYU to attack the rim there. They played a bunch of zone. You know what? You don't foul in zone a lot, and then Toulson missed the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Bean for three. The Cougars have beat the Aggies 68-64. It is eight in a row for BYU in this rivalry, and this, one of the best games we've had in years. Yeah, very good. These are two really solid basketball teams, Dave, and, and, uh, and BYU 
even though they didn't shoot the three outstanding in the second half, were able to hold on. I, I was really impressed with how they rebounded the ball against a team that's a, one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Got to hand it to BYU. And this, this Aggie team played solid defense. They went to a zone in the second half, which caused BYU some problems. And, uh, and brought this thing right to the end. This Aggie team is going to get nothing but better as Kata gets more and more minutes. BYU is getting better as well. Yoli now 20 points and 10 rebounds. He is now number two alone in school history with 40 double-doubles. And the only guy ahead of him now is Kreshimer Chosic with 48. We're going to visit with Yoli in a moment. Second night in a row, second game this week, he's had a quiet offensive Half first in half. the first half, and then he's made the difference in the second. Is he doing? Is he doing the cliche that coaches say, "Hey, let the game come to you"? Well, that's, it must be what he's doing. He's he's getting his teammates involved, and in the second half, he just takes over. He was especially in the first few minutes of the second half. He only carried this basketball team. Jake Toulson walking by us, all smiles. T.J. Haas, another solid game. Dalton Nixon had some huge plays, keeping rebounds alive and defense. And uh, Connor Harding hitting some big threes. Axelius had a big three. Yoli Childs is tonight's built Ford Tough player of the game. Brought to you by your local Ford stores. And he's with Spencer. Hey, Dave, I've uh, got Yoli Childs and Alex Barcelo, as you said. Yoli, um, let's start with you. Slow first half. You're able to get going in the second half. What changed for you in the BYU offense in that second half? Uh, I think we just got to stick with it. You know, at the end of the day, the defense is going to have to pick their poison. They're either going to come hard on me and we're going to get wide open threes, or they're not, and they're going to have to deal with me one-on-one -on -one in the post. But we don't need to be talking to me right now. We need to be talking with the dude with the ice in his veins, <laughs> Alex Barcelo, A.B., the GOAT, the man himself. Let's go. Alex, what'd you see on that last play when you were open and made that three-pointer to put BYU up four? Um, I mean, I saw no one came out to guard me, so I just shot it. You know, my teammates were telling me I started off with a slow game. None of my shots fell, but they just trusted me and, and knew that I, my shots were eventually going to fall and just continue to make the right play. So I'm just happy for my team that we got and this win. And the mid-range jumper and the big stops. This dude, man. <laughs> this dude. Joel, you see that shot go in. What's going through your mind when A.B. knocks it down? Well, I had to go tell the ref that it was a three because he saw the NBA line. So I had to go take care of business, and then we were good. What do you think about that kind of teammate, Alex? Man, I love it, man. It's great to play with these guys. They're, they're an unbelievable team. Congratulations to both of you on another big win. Appreciate you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Spencer. Good job tonight. 15th straight win for BYU here at Vivint Arena. Man, they, they like this, but although in the past, We've always said BYU sure likes this building. They shoot it great in this building. In the first half, they shot it great. In the second half, three for nine from three, or not three for nine, uh, they were five for 16 from three in the second half, 31%. Ball wasn't falling quite as easily as it usually does, but they figured out a way to win. They were gritty. And I, this this is a win that uh, the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee will remember in March. Because oh, you watch, Utah State is the preseason favorite to win the Mountain West, and, and they're every bit that good. Um, they're, they've got size, they've got shooting. Sam Merrill, BYU held in check tonight, just two of 11, 0 for 5 from 3. They've guarded him well. He's going to have better nights. He's going to be great. They, they will contend for the Mountain West Championship. Hey, be with us Monday for BYU Sports Nation, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Next Saturday, we're at the Marriott Center. Remember that place, the Marriott yeah, Center? it's been a while. BYU Weber State, 9 Eastern time, live here on BYU TV. For Spencer Linton and my partner, Blaine Fowler, and our entire crew, here in Salt Lake City, I'm Dave McCann. Our final score in the 236th meeting, it's BYU 68, Utah State 64. We hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great night, everybody.